Hi all! Functions are very powerful features of any programming language. They're used in all sorts of programming languages such as C++, Java, C Sharp, to name a few. In this video, we will discuss function parameters and returns in C++. But what we discuss today is applicable to other languages such as Java and C Sharp as well. So, why do we need functions? We can really write a very long program with lots of statements, right, to solve a large problem. The idea is to break down the problem into smaller chunks so that's easier to solve, all right? So, main can um, call smaller functions to solve each of the small problems, like this. And the functions solve problems and can return results to main. See the return statements here? This is exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. And the results are being saved by main in some local variables result1 and result2. Alright, but first let's discuss some concepts of a function. A main that we always use as our main program itself is a function. The return type is the type of data main returns. See that there's a return statement that is returning 0, which is an integer, and that's why the return type is int. The name of the function is main, uh, and the function can have any name. We will see all kinds of names. Uh, they just need to follow variable naming rules, such as it should begin with an alphabetic character. We may send some data to a function uh, using variables inside the parenthesis. Here the list is empty, but we will see soon see some examples where we will have parameter variables. And last but not the least, the body of the function contains statements the function will execute. Calling a function. To call a function, use the function name followed by parenthesis and a semicolon, just like that. When call, program executes the body of the call function. The function may return a result. And after the function terminates, execution resumes at the calling function's point of call. The result is saved by the main function using a local variable. And this is also what we're going to explore a lot more in in, a, in this video. Sending data to a function, one can pass a number of uh, arguments to a function. In the function, the variables that hold the values passed are called parameters. So let's take a look at a fun example. We are at a wonderful Italian restaurant. The lady at the right is main. She wants angel hair pasta with marinara sauce. She asks the waiter for it. Waiter function takes the order in terms of arguments. Waiter can also take orders with other kinds of pasta such as fettuccine and other kinds of sauce such as alfredo sauce. Isn't it? Okay. These arguments are taken by waiter as parameters. Parameters are pasta type and sauce. Can have many different values, right? Pasta is cooked in the statements and the pasta is returned by the waiter to main. Here it is, ma'am. And main accepts the pasta from waiter and says, aha. Well, now it is time to see this kind of concepts in action in a real program. Okay, so we know that the area of a circle is pi r square. So here is a function called circle area where area is calculated pi times radius times radius. The function takes radius, a double variable, as the parameter and calculates the area and prints a statement showing the area. Okay. And how does main call this function? Main calls this function passing an argument 5.5. And one important thing here is that 
function does not return anything, no return statement, has a return type of void. Time to take a look at this uh, program in Visual Studio. All right, we got this program where we got the function circle area uh, that demonstrates what we have been talking about. It takes radius as a parameter, a double variable as a parameter. Main calls this function twice, line 14 and 15, once passing 5.5 as a radius, next passing 2.5 argument value as the radius. All right, let's run this program through the debugger and see how the control passes from the main to the function. All right, we are in the beginning of main. We are just about to call circle area with the per, uh, argument value of 5.5. The control just went into circle area. Look at the radius. This is the uh, parameter radius value 5.5 that we just passed. Now circle area is going to calculate the area, do some C outs. All right, the C outs are showing up just like this very nicely. Right? Okay, and come back to main. Next call with 2.5. We go in circle area. Radius is now 2.5 as passed by main. Again, circle area calculates all that, does the C outs. Let's take a look. Nice C outs. Now this radius was 2.5, radius is 19.63, and comes back to main. All right, I will stop the debugging. Next, we are going to have a function that returns the area to main. All right, so look at this value being returned uh, now to, to main. Notice that the return type of circle area is double as well. So it needs to match the type of the variable that is being returned, uh, needs to match the return type. Okay. All right. The area value 95.03 is returned to main, and main saves it in its own area variable that is also of type double. Nice, right? Let's take a look at this program in Visual Studio. Let's build it. Okay, here just like the PowerPoint, we got the circle area and we got uh, return statement in circle area and main now is saving the return whatever the function is giving back it is saving it in its own local variable let's try this but see what happens okay we are at the beginning of main all right we are just about to call circle area we are in circle area now radius is 5.5 Calculating the area, returning the area, see the area 95.03, all right, we're going to return this to main, all right, almost there, circle area returned, came back from circle area 95.03, see area is 95.03, this is the local area variable in main is 95.03. Okay, let's take a look at these C out. So radius that was in circle area showed 5.5. Area of the circle came from main 95.03. Nice, right? Now we are in line 16. This is an interesting one. See, 
we are calling circle area with the parameter value of 2.5 and instead of saving the return in a local variable we are using that in cout itself all right let's see how that works we are going to go into circle area again see radius is 2.5 just like whatever we are passing here as argument goes to radius circle area does the stuff returns all right circle area return 19.6349 whatever that's the area that came back or circle area came back to the c out all right so if i just do that and i'm going to see the radius of the circle is 2.5 area is 19.6349 okay Another way of using a return from a function is directly use it in C out or some expression. All right, one last more example. A function with two parameters and a return. Uh, given a rectangle, length and width, the area is length times width. Rectangle area function does just that, takes length and width as parameters and calculates the area and returns the area. All right, main, we got two variables, uh, value 1 and value 2 filled with values 5.5 and 3.5 respectively. And these values 5.5 and 3.5 are passed to the function and the area value of 19.25 is returned to main and main saves this in its own area variable. Let's take a look at this in a program. All right, here is just like the PowerPoint. All right, so without further ado, let's start it. Okay, I'm in the beginning of main. Value one, value two, filled with 5.5 and 3.5. I'm about to call the function. I'm in function now, rectangle area, length is 5.5, width is 3.5. Notice that these names don't have to be the same you know, the variable names can be anything, right? So this says length and width, this is value one, value two. It depends on the position of the parameters, okay? So value one is the first one, will replace length. Value two is the second one, will replace width. All right, so that's good. Now, area is calculated, some C out is done. Uh, return area, I'm coming back to main. Rectangle area return 19.25, okay? So there you go, area gets filled with 19.25, all right? And line 18 is just like the previous program. Instead of variables, we are passing direct value 6.7 and 3.4. Okay, let's do that. And we're gonna use the return of the rectangle areas function directly in the C out instead of saving it in a local variable. So F11 takes us into rectangle area and see the length and the width 6.7, 3.4. All right. Nice, right? Okay. Does this, its thing? Return. Return. Now we are back. Rectangle area returned is 22.78. And that's what we will see after the C out executes. All right, let's take a look. All the stuff that came out of the C outs are the first two values, area 19.25, second two values from line 18, rectangle area 2278. Time to stop the debugging. All right, so that's about it. Let's take a look at a little small short quiz. I will put the questions out, wait for you to think about it, and then show the answers, okay? 
True false. A parameter is a special purpose variable that is declared inside the parenthesis of a function definition. True? True. A function can have zero too many parameters and it can return this many values. How many values it can return? Well, zero or one. It may not return anything when it has a return type void or it can return only one which is of the return type, right? Int or double, whatever. The first thing before the function name, that's the one return. This, this statement causes a function to end. Speaking of returns, this is the return statement. Look at the following function header. What is the data type of the parameter? You guessed it, double. What is the data type of the function's return value? Int. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you have any question about the content, please email me at lopamudra.roychodhuri at angelo.edu. Bye now. Have fun.